Good morning fellow option traders. This is Jeff and welcome to the daily scan for Tuesday, September 10th, 2013. Not a whole lot going on from the scheduled announcement perspective. There doesn't seem to be anything that's very market affecting at this time. So we'll move right along to take a look at what's going on around the world. In Asia, solidly up on all indexes. Um, looking pretty good over there. In Europe, the same. All are positive. And most are positive because of this. Looks like Putin is, uh, I guess you could say, bailing um, Obama out on this deal. Could be, but uh, I just wanted to point to you something else that's interesting here is this uh, article about Tesla. There's a video in there about um, Tesla compared to the Aston Martin and you may want to watch that video. It's pretty interesting. The uh, driver of the Tesla giving the uh, doing the video is incredibly impressed <laughs> with the Tesla. It just kind of blows the Aston Martin away in acceleration. So that's a pretty interesting video to watch if you're a car enthusiast at all. But um, that's not what we're here for. We're not here to talk about cars. We're here to talk about options. And we are going to move right over to the futures here in the States. Looking pretty darn good overall there. All of them are pre-market up more than half a percent. Gold has sunk because of the reduced risk. Oil dropped a couple bucks from when we looked at it yesterday. It was over 110. So um, looking pretty good there. Let's take a look at it. at the account here. Yesterday we were only in Chipotle and GLD. Today we are in both SPX and SPY. And let me give you a little bit of a story about that. So um, remember I said that the weekly 10 a.m. SPY, I was going to switch over to XPX. And when I looked at things, we were looking at a pretty nice, sweet delta of about 20, between 20 and 30. Uh, so I picked the short strike at 16.45 and entered my order. And my order was at midpoint and sat there for at least a couple of minutes. And nothing happened. Now, I took a look at um, the amount of the volume and the open interest. And it was doing pretty good, actually. Um, but not as good as SPY. Oops, we're looking at Chipotle here. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, there's a good amount of open interest here. And there is a, at least two or three hundred orders that had, or contracts that had already exchanged hands at these price levels here. But my order wouldn't execute at midpoint. And then pretty soon my midpoint uh, was actually no longer the midpoint. My price was no longer the midpoint. The midpoint was actually higher and then it would go lower for a while and my order still didn't execute. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take a look at the spiders around that same level. So my short said 1645 here. So on the spiders, I looked at 164 and a half and that looked pretty good and I'd like to stretch them out a couple of whole points here so at least a couple of strikes down so I actually moved down four strikes and I was able to collect a premium on my 10 that I did on the SPY versus the 2 that I did on SPX so if we were to look at this with a risk profile now we're looking at uh, SPY max profit at 210 not including transaction fees and SPX at 180 not including transaction fees. Now 
because I only did two lots, I guess you could say, or I, that's what I did. Don't it's not what I guess. It's what I did um, because I did two lots on it. That's four contracts, and on the spiders I did ten lots, and that is twenty contracts. So that was uh, that's going to cost me a lot more in transaction fees because I do a per contract uh, fee on these. So this one's going to cost a little bit more. So it's going to eat into the profits, which is okay because. This one's at 210 and SPX is at 180, so max profit should pretty much be kind of a wash. So when I put this order in on the spiders yesterday, it also did not execute right away at midpoint, but you know, within, you know, I'm pretty much used to a couple of seconds, but lately it's been five seconds or maybe ten seconds. So 10 seconds later, it executed, and I went, then I uh, started the process to cancel the order on SPX, and then it executed. But SPX took a good three or four minutes to execute as the price moved above and below the midpoint that I had put in for my limit order. So it took longer for SPX to execute, I guess, is the point that I'm trying to get at. So if you need to get out quick, um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But anyway, now I'm in both of these. And right now I'm, you know, pretty happy that I'm in both of them. It's obvious you can see why um, as we take a look at the charts on these um, that they're profitable right now and it looks like they're going to uh, make a nice move today too. So here's the spiders and I'm going to do that. So my short is at 164 and a half. So we're here 164 and a half. And it was around 10 o'clock actually when I got into these. So here this candle starts at 948. <clears throat> this one starts at 8.30. What the heck is going on? It's supposed to be 9.30. Something's wrong with the clock here. Did they mess me up? I'm going to have to check on that. I just did a little uh, poking around, but I can't find... I thought you could set your time zone in the app. In the app. Uh, it's been so long, I don't remember where it is. But here we're showing 6.07, and that's Eastern Time. But when I look at the charts, I'm seeing them starting, this is starting at 8.30. That's not right. There's something wrong there. But anyway, uh, I would have entered on this candle yesterday. So I'll uh, mark these levels in here and you'll see them on tomorrow's video. It's not an important thing for today. So right now we're going to jump right into the A-plus list. But before we do that, let's just take a look to see what kind of uh, alerts we have still sitting out here. we got Celgene, and that's the only one that's still active. That means Baidu would have gone off yesterday. All right, so we'll take a look at that one. So let's jump right over to Apple here, and we'll look at their chart and see what's going on. Apple had a nice day yesterday. We were looking for a possible a little bit better, livelier hook down here to get in. Um, but we're in an uptrend and we just moved up. So this is looking pretty good. We're going to throw an alert in on here. And wait to see if that one develops. And if you remember yesterday, we were talking about a gap up at the open on Apple, and it definitely worked out that way. And we're looking at another gap up here. Last was at the close yesterday, and here's the bid ask now in pre-market and 
13,527 shares have traded hands so far. Amazon. Amazon is looking pretty good, but it's not giving us an entry at this time. Amazon is looking very good. Uh, it, you could possibly chase this, but I am not going to do that right now. What I am going to do here, because I'm pretty impressed with this when it comes down below the 50, hits it, and then comes back up to retest and blows by it. That, to me, is a good sign using that type of an indication. And as I look over here at the weekly with our... Um, indicators here stochastic and MACD are also looking very positive and it looks like we're not going to have a war the market I think is going to like that and I would say we might be going back up here to retest this high very soon uh, I'm going to look for a some sort of very low risk bullish play on this maybe a calendar out there or something like that um, at the 315 level uh, so we'll take a look at that and I'll report back tomorrow on it I may even end up doing something alright so I was looking at Baidu actually the alert did trigger yesterday and it's coming back to me now in a fog early morning fog uh, I did look at it and I was not happy with where the Delta was versus the price and the amount of credit that I would get off of the trade. I wasn't happy with it, so I took a pass on it. Um, and you can see that there's, you know, I was looking at double calendars. I was looking at all sorts of different things. Maybe an iron condor. I, I wasn't happy with the look of an iron condor. And I wasn't happy with going past um, this week's expiration, at least based on the feeling in the world yesterday, I guess you might say. I was afraid that uh, something might happen. So, uh, not afraid anymore, at least not for this week's expiration or next week's here, which is the normal monthly expiration. So, I'll be looking a little bit longer term now. Um, but still not seeing any real direction here on Amazon. Let me just zoom out here so maybe I can pick up the 50. There, there she is. Alright, so um, this is looking a little consolidated here. And look at this. There's like, there's mo no momentum, either positive or negative. So we'll wait for that one to kick back into gear. Sell gene. Still have the alert, didn't quite hit it yesterday. Uh, might have been a little unreasonable on my level, but it's still looking to me like as though it would be a good longer term trade maybe out into next week so that alert will remain uh, Chipotle Chipotle or not that uh, Chipotle CF Industries uh, I want to look at an iron condor on that for next week Let's take a look here. Iron Condor for regular September expiration. We're looking at, uh, uh, we're sort of in a twilight zone here. Looking, would we'll be looking for a 20 delta. I'm not really seeing it here. Uh, let's say best case, what would we get for this one? I get 38 cents. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So 185 and 205. Let's take a look. 205 is up here. 185 is down here. I might just go with that. I might. That looks pretty good, actually, to tell you the truth. So if it's looking as attractive, um, after the market opens, about 10 o'clock or so, we still look like we got some pretty... Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to lock it. 
I'll lock this price in here and see how close I can get to that. Sometimes these pre-market prices are overly optimistic. But even if it's down a nickel on each one and the stock still remains the same for a price, that still would be a pretty attractive and uh, relatively probable iron condor as well. You can see that we're within the standard deviation here and we're looking at worst case uh, 70 85 percent 83 percent probability of expiring out of the money so that's not too bad worst case a little bit better down here on the lower end but on the higher end worst case so it'd be 183 roughly rounded off that's not bad or I mean uh, 83 <laughs> 183 okay uh, let's look at Chipotle we're already up to 16 minutes in this video it's also looking like an iron condor isn't it but I'm not gonna do any that on this because of this uh, very strong upward trend here now uh, momentum starting to pick up a little bit to the upside here and we have a nice hookup we're moving up over here and moving up there uh, let's see if Chipotle can give us a little bit of excitement today as well I would suspect that most of these bullish alerts are going to work out today because I think the market is going to be euphoric over what's happening okay Google um, very nice strong move up but no entry it's a little bit stretched out right now I would like to see it come back down so we're going to throw a target in here that's what I would be looking for provided this upward trend can continue so I'd like to see it in like two or three more days moving up and then a pull back and give us a good spot to jump in Goldman Sachs let's see here yeah looks like we're in a new uptrend here same thing pretty much as um, Google we'll be looking for a target down there LinkedIn I never did hit our target we could move it over to there and see if we come down and touch that looks like it doesn't want to fill this gap here MasterCard and and again you know this week like last week I'm going to be looking at those overnight trades on Thursday uh, right so um, we're definitely in a strong uptrend here overall everywhere looking for a target down here Netflix uh, okay maybe Netflix is going to give us a target here so I'd be looking for a trade here because it's already Tuesday for this week expiration this week here on Netflix a little bit of an early jump on this one so we'll see if that works out and it's only because you know it's looking pretty strong we had a little bit of a dip here and a little bit of a dip here uh, I'll have to take that under consideration if I decide if the alert triggers today and there is a pretty good chance it is going to trigger all right price line old drawings um, where are we here we are in an uptrend up up there a little bit of a dip down here looking like some weakness coming in on the weekly let's throw a target in I don't want to get in too early on this one or chase that particular one we looked at the SPs 
let's take a look at Tesla. It's old trade. All right, Tesla. Yeah, you might want to read that article just for maybe an explanation of why it's pulling back a tad, but I believe it's going to be coming back. So I am not worried about them. I'm going to be looking for a hook there on Tesla. And last but not least is Visa. I get rid of uh, old drawings. Um, in a downtrend, um, not seeing anything of interest on Visa right now. Okay, so that's it. Funny how they work out to approximately 20 minutes almost every day. That's called uh, routine and uh, called a methodology. Go through the same exercise every day. Don't let it get boring. It's actually kind of fun. And this is uh, making these videos is helping me, and I hope it's helping you. So everybody have a great day, and happy trading.